Limiting factor graphs regarding photosynthesis are easy to interpret once you understand what a slope versus a horizontal line means from the plant's perspective. We will cover how to interpret these graphs and the specified practical, which is an investigation looking at how changing light intensity affects the rate of photosynthesis in pondweed. Here we have a plant inside a sealed bag. There is a data logger that's measuring the atmosphere inside the sealed bag. What it can do is it can measure the rate of photosynthesis by either measuring the oxygen produced over time or the carbon dioxide levels decreasing over time. Please notice that a second bag is sealing off the soil. This is to avoid microorganisms like bacteria or fungi respiring and affecting the oxygen and carbon dioxide levels which may affect our data. We also have the option of placing sodium hydroxide solution with the plant if we wish to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. But otherwise, we place water of equal volume in there. This is to try to control the variable that is the volume of atmosphere available to the plant for each observation. Finally, for this example, we can also control the levels of carbon dioxide by using this gas canister. Starting with the carbon dioxide limiting factor graph, let's look at what happens to the plant's rate of photosynthesis when carbon dioxide levels are at zero in the bag. As you would expect, the rate of photosynthesis is zero. We will gradually add more carbon dioxide into the bag and notice how the rate of photosynthesis is increasing. At this point, if we keep increasing carbon dioxide and the rate of photosynthesis doesn't level off, then carbon dioxide is limiting photosynthesis. The plant wants more carbon dioxide as it has the capacity to photosynthesize more. Remember this, slope equals carbon dioxide levels are too low. Carbon dioxide is a limiting factor. When the line levels off, this means the plant has reached its capacity to use carbon dioxide. No matter how much more carbon dioxide we add, the rate of photosynthesis is not going up. So we could say something else might be limiting the rate of photosynthesis. Remember, horizontal line equals carbon dioxide no longer limiting photosynthesis. So maybe another factor is. So we will increase the light intensity using this lighting rig. If we start by making it completely dark, we can see the rate of photosynthesis is now zero, even though there is plenty of carbon dioxide available. Now we increase the light intensity and we can see that the rate of photosynthesis goes up. If the slope has not leveled off, then we know light intensity is the limiting factor for photosynthesis in this case, because the plant would be able to photosynthesize more if the light intensity was higher. So when the line is horizontal, this means that the plant has reached its capacity to utilize light energy and increasing the light intensity more will not increase the rate of photosynthesis. So something else could be limiting photosynthesis. Now that we have carbon dioxide levels and light intensity at optimum levels, we can now control the temperature. This will produce a graph that is very similar to an enzyme activity versus temperature graph. The temperature where the rate of photosynthesis is optimum in this case is 24 degrees Celsius for this specific plant species. We can say that at the peak, the temperature is not the limiting rate of photosynthesis, but another factor might be. Notice that if we increase the temperature beyond the optimum temperature, we get a sudden drop in the rate. And this relates to the enzymes involved in photosynthesis denaturing. Therefore, we can say any temperature that isn't the optimum temperature is limiting the rate of photosynthesis. The specified practical that you have done in the lab hopefully, looks at light intensity and the rate of photosynthesis in pondweed. We will just look at the variables, sources of error and suggest improvements regarding this specified practical. The independent variable is the light intensity, which is controlled by placing a lamp at set distances from the pondweed. The dependent variable is counting the number of bubbles produced per minute, which reflects the rate of photosynthesis. The bubbles contain oxygen because oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis. More bubbles, equals higher rate of photosynthesis. The control variables are using the same light source and the same plants for each distance. It is difficult to control the temperature in this experiment because the lamp is hot and it could heat up the water when it is close to the pondweed and therefore affect the rate of photosynthesis. Another source of error is that the bubbles can vary in size so the volume of oxygen produced could vary with each bubble. To avoid this problem, we could have the bubbles be bubbled into a gas syringe. A gas syringe can measure directly the volume of oxygen produced. In the next lesson, we will look at the structure of the leaf.